in here and see how things get started. Hopefully we don't have too many connection issues. Last game, holding on the Drow Ranger once again. Pushing out. He will definitely find the farm that he's looking for. The last hit leader already, 8 and 5, so even denying quite heavy and we'll get some maxed out souls. One of those rare times when you get to see him go Necromaster level 1 and also one of those rare times that we get to miss for... Gold, not going to be an easy kill. He's got attack. the Aegis now to go with his phase, Radiant's Yasha, Morbid Mask, and be the hero that they send mid lane to defend. But this T1 tower dropping fast. Yeah, RTZ has definitely gotten a lot of space this game. There is a glyph for the dire side. They'll use it just in the nick of time. RTZ goes charging in, stunned up, fingered right away. And that'll be the end of the Aegis. He's dying twice. He's surrounded. Coming back to life. His oh teammates are on the way, but they're not going to get there fast. They're not going to even get off Whirling Axes here. No, from full to zero. In the duration of that stun lock, a little Dyer's too aggressive there from old Artor. It will hand over the tier one tower. Dro Ranger getting the last hit. Secret actually want to fight this FNG. Jukes the LSA and the Dragon Slave. Puppy graves himself as he runs in. And S4 cleans up the Lion. So they end up getting a counter kill out of it. Block the bugs, he's silent. He's got a bat, yeah, he does and lives. Okay, meanwhile, back in the top lane, initiation breaks out. S4 hexed up as Sedoi goes in, but looks like he was silenced from the Orchid. Now it's FNG on the run. Puppy wants to dive this, but no poison touch can't slow him down. S4, however, on the hunt. FNG trying to juke around, but he's got no armor. The weave makes it an easy kill as they right click him to death. Demon Witch will be put in the grave attack. to talk oh. to his demon friends. Now the tier one tower up top will fall, and it is the Queen of Pain that gets fallen. the bonus goal. Now G bottom. down bottom squares up against Zai. He'll channel the Requiem, and the Death Requiem. Looks like a double Requiem enough to blow up Zai. Zai gets the kill first. The late game, but like 20 minutes and beyond, teams seem to trade their jungles a bit. Oh, it's mistimed on Lil. He will live through the Yules, but so does Kuroki. Puppy there with the shallow grave, nicely handled. Lil goes one way, Sedoi goes the other. S4 wants the kill. Soulburn would have been enough, but finds it with auto attacks. Lil, nowhere to go. He'll get brought down in the trees. Two for one across the map. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Zai did get jumped on. Looks like a three on one. They, this guy's just melting. Fervor, man. Makes it so easy. This yeah. is even without minus armor, too. Just imagine if uh, the medallion was here from Zai. There you go. He finally uses it at the end. The Immediate smoke as well to follow this up. Radiant Vision did not... Just trying to do what he can with that Dagon to make some space for his team. Arteezy still feeling pretty healthy here. Has the Satanic off cooldown. They will just kind of slow siege Radiant's this tower from the low ground. Secret. Quite a few buybacks available here, but on select heroes for the Radiant side. Illidan, the big one, who is lacking the buyback. He has the Lincoln Sphere. Dagon again popped on the Lincolns. Vitam's already paying for itself. Arteezy now gets initiated on. Shallow Grave comes out, though. S4 uses the BKB. They drop the hammer on the Centaur. The upgraded Laguna Blade enough to bring him down. They still have the Aegis. They can just do this again. Centaur pings out the gem. Looks like they will recover it. Secret winning this War of Attrition so far. Time on the Aegis. Now down to just about a minute. Maybe a minute ten. Go pretty fast here. Laguna on cooldown for 40 seconds though, so that makes it a bit trickier here, but Illidan... Be careful. Centaur has a buyback. He may need to burn it here. Illidan gets brought down straight away. There's your buyback from the Centaur. Kuro getting low, but still alive. Arteezy, BKB on. Satanic cooling down. Remember, Aegis has yet to be deployed, although right now could be the time. Shallow Grave comes out, stunned up by the familiar. Satanic again. Satanic comes back off cooldown. He may finally go down this time, making so much space. Somehow still alive. Gets a bash on G. There's the Death Requiem to finish off the Aegis. But meanwhile, in the base, Zai is actually on the high ground, getting Vision for his team and pressuring these supports. Now Sedoi, a dieback for him. Only one buyback available of the dead heroes, and it's the Shadow Fiend. Will he burn it? I think he has to. This could be a GG push all of a sudden, gods. Yeah, you're getting mid lane, you're getting bottom lane, and top lane has no tier 2 tower. That's exposed as well. It's going to go for the tier 3 and that mega creep push. There it is. GG is called. It's Team Secret that take game two. Now just one victory away from securing their spot at the Summit 3. You can see just how hard it is is to push high ground there though. Secret took them a few ages, and even with the ages, they had to kind of finesse that so much. They were just poking and prodding. They weren't even willing to just send the troll and ages on the high ground just to brute force it. That really highlights how difficult pushing high ground can be in Aces Polo. They executed, they did what they could, but it just, at some point, it just wasn't enough. Secret just a bit too polished.